matagal na yung mga ninuno namin ang gumawa. Eh, sabi nila na noon wala pa si Jesus. Yan talaga ang pak uh, unang pagkain namin. Rice as a staple is, of course, uh, what we eat in this part of the world three times, at least three times a day. In many cases, the poorer the family, the main aim, the main aspiration of the family is just to buy rice for the day. It's so simple, straightforward. You want to have some money to buy rice. It's unthinkable for a Filipino to eat without rice. In this part of, of the world, poverty is, is as high as one-third. Of the, of, of the number of households and nutrition, the poor nutrition and nutrient deficiency goes hand in hand with that. Vitamin A deficiency affects uh, mainly the 25% um, uh, of the population that lives in poverty, what we might call the more marginalized sectors of the society. I would say that um, you know we are really talking about um, the deficiency is really a manifestation of a social issue, which is um, extensive poverty in this country. If you have a situation like that, and you have um, people who think, okay, since we cannot do anything about the poverty of this country, uh, why don't we uh, engineer a genetically modified variety? of rice that contains a gene that allows the crop, the grain in this case, to express a nutrient that is not naturally present in the rice. That nutrient is beta-carotene, which then uh, will be absorbed by the body and translated to vitamin A. This has been promoted by GE companies as, this, as one of the solutions to malnutrition and world hunger. That with this, you know, you're going to get rid of your vitamin A uh, uh, deficiency and uh, it's going to result in nutritional benefits. The problem is um, uh, they are promoting a technological fix for a social question. And that's, uh, you know, you need a social solution to a social problem, not a technological solution. So ge genetically modified organisms are called as such because they were artificially modified, meaning uh, a gene uh, was put inside this organism through a process done in the, the laboratory. Uh, this could not have been possible through natural uh, genetic processes like uh, hybridization. They say that introducing a gene to a plant is precise because you know exactly what gene you desire and that's not the case. You, you really cannot predict uh, everything that will happen when you modify, when you introduce a foreign gene into an Organism. The effect of this uh, genetically modified organisms, you, you don't know the adverse effects. You don't know when it will, when it will come out. So I, I, I believe that uh, op opposition to GM products, particularly the GM food plants, is justified in the sense that. Uh, you don't really know the long-term effect on, on human health. For food, I think it's not safe to, it's not safe for human health. 
there are many alternatives. There's really very strong resistance with respect to the introduction of, of the GMOs in the country, particularly for our rice varieties. We are rich in indigenous leafy, green, and yellow vegetables, which are very good sources of vitamin A. And the biotech companies claims that there's no ecological impact nor impacts on the health of the of population. Uh, but we have not found any publication regarding such claims. I'm a scientist and I tried to do research if there would be relevant publications on this issue and we have not seen anything. So what is the basis for their claim? The effect of the GMO in, in the environment can, can actually be a significant impact. So how, why risk the introduction of such plants? Organic yung system ang ginagamit namin sa pagtatanim. Kasi nga, ano, may programa kami yung pangkalusugan. Parang hindi naman akma na nagtatanim kami ng... Na, meron kami yung pangkalusugan programa tapos nag, nag, ano, kami, naglalason kami ng, tan, ng tanim namin. Siyempre may pangamba kami doon sa golden rice kasi nga nag-organic kami. Ang isang pangamba namin doon yung makontaminate yung mga binhi namin na uh, tinatanim kasi nag-organic kami tapos makakontaminate siya. Kasi tungkol sa... Kasi mas... Uh, ang concern naman namin siyempre mas yung pangkalusugan ng pamilya, yung pagkain mo. Hindi lang sa pamilya. Kung ibebenta mo din yun, dapat sigurado mo din kasi nga buhay din naman yung nakasalalay kung magbebenta ka na hindi sigurado ang produkto. Eh, dito kasi sa amin maraming ano eh, yung kalabasa lang, akma dito sa lugar namin, marami kami inaani ng kalabasa, mga leafy vegetable, malunggay, yan mga ganyan, hindi naman yan kailangan ng bilin, may mga vitamin A na siya. So, maraming pwedeng paraan, hindi lang yung paglikha o pagkain ng golden rice. Welcome, welcome. Come in to our daycare crash for babies, Arugaan. Salamat. Arugaan is a Filipino term meaning to nurture fully with lifetime commitment. We really focus on maternal, infant, and young child nutrition and, of course, feeding. We use indigenous foods. That means locally available, locally grown, and rich in resources. We usually buy what is cheaper in the market because we would know that, that that food now is in season. We believe that what is in season is what our body needs and what the children needs. We're against GMO because we take the precautionary principles. Until they have proven that it is safe and it's 100% safe, then we can talk. But until then, that, that is our stand. We cannot risk the lives, the health of our mothers and our babies. Not on our watch. Bilang isang sharia, hindi po ako makapaniwala na ang GMO ay solusyon sa world hunger. Ang kinakain namin mga Muslim ay yung halal lamang. So kung sasabihin natin ng halal, yung walang halong marurumi at saka yung may ano na pagkain uh, nakakasama ng katawan. So dahilan doon, ang sinasabi namin sa GMO food ay dapat munang iwasan. O yan ay naklasify namin na isa siyang masbo. Ang masbo ay ibig sabihin, dapat mo nang iwasan. Sa akin, ibalik natin yung kung ano ang uh, 
uh, pagkain natin ng mga ninuno natin, yun ang ating uh, ibalik kung kaya natin pang mabalik. Here we serve um, traditional and uh, heirloom Philippine recipes. And what we try to do is we try to showcase um, the biodiversity of the Philippines with uh, the recipes and the food we serve. You know, chefs should be activists, teaching people to eat properly, um, teaching recipes that are easily done at home, using ingredients that are really, readily available in the marketplace. So, you know, um, I think what's happening right now is very counterintuitive in the way the Philippines is trying to uh, uh, solve the malnutrition problem. That's one thing that we're also trying to campaign, is to really go back to using local ingredients. When, when, we, when we cook real food, we begin to get more in touch, attached with nature as well. So we begin to ask questions of where does the food come from? What's the condition of the soil? So it's like everything's interconnected, but we have to acknowledge first and foremost that we have to begin eating real food and we have to begin cooking our own food. And eventually, if the time comes that we plant our own food, I think that's the only time when we would really be like independent, free and sustainable. We are very much alarmed by the way government agencies are the one promoting the, the GM rice. There was a, a very much a lack of uh, consultation. The decision making is not uh, being transparent and we suspect some kind of manipulation or even corruption along the way as they try to promote this kind of technology. We always invoke the pre precautionary principle the problem with GMO is that uh, they do not want to speak about the risk and, uh, and about the big negative impacts. All they uh, do is to convince people that this is good and these are the benefits. And uh, yeah, we go back to the same uh, suspicion that we are promoting the interests of the multinational companies instead of trying to safeguard the, the health of the people. And this is something alarming in that regard. The long-term solution to, to poverty is not GMO. The government is keep on saying and their argument that this uh, will be the answer to uh, malnutrition or uh, to, to uh, uh, vitamin A de deficiency. I think that's just a kind of propaganda to make uh, GMO products more acceptable. With respect to you know, the issue of uh, GMOs or the golden rice in particular, uh, being slickly promoted as a humanitarian issue uh, uh, in order to improve the image of the GMOs. Um, I would agree, uh, certainly. This is more than just golden rice. This is about the drive to push GE technology uh, and legitimize it in this country. And they're using this, they're using, uh, they're using the so-called uh, curing the vitamin A deficiency argument via uh, golden rice, um, you know, as the battering ram for this. The more we engage, the more it gets clear that golden rice plays a very specific, a very special role in the whole game, in the whole discourse of ge on genetic engineering, on genetically modified organisms. I think they, they want to use the Philippines as a springboard for uh, uh, legitimizing GMOs, um, uh, not only for this country, but for the rest of Southeast Asia. You know, what's motivating them is this 600 million um, uh, person market known as ASEAN. We are the country where um, genetically modified rice, no golden rice in particular, will first be introduced and where it will be, it will be approved. No? But if we say no, like if we say no, that means so much in the whole discourse of genetic 
genetically modified organisms, in particular the whole discourse on genetic engineering, and on technology and society in general. We don't want to be part of, of, of an experiment where I have nothing to say. Like Even if I want to say no later down the line, you cannot withdraw it, you cannot change it. When people realize or when we reach that point that, hey, it's not, it's not really benefiting us or there's this problem and that, how do we take this back? Is there a way to take this back? Like to, to withdraw this completely from, from the environment or from those people who have already eaten it? None. So once that decision is done, it's done. We have so much rich resources here. Why would you put beta carotene on golden rice when there are uh, a lot, a host of other plants, edible plants, that has beta carotene on it? There are so many alternatives. We really have to reevaluate the issue of nutrition in the context of what is in the Philippines. We, we tell our people to plant vegetables that are easy to plant, you know. Like uh, sweet potato, moringa, or commonly known as malunggay. These two crops, you can easily plant in your backyard. You can plant it on your pots. And then plant. You just put it there and you don't do anything. And just in a few weeks' time, you already have your your malunggay, the moringa, moringa oleifera. You cannot plant golden rice in your backyard. You have to buy that. <laughs>